Go on the varsity table. No, but you sit on the varsity table. Ethan, come sit by Isaac. You're not playing. Okay, fine. Dom, it's the varsity table. Too. We don't know what's going on either. Very intense volume adjusting going on in the front. Sorry for the technical difficulties, everyone.
All right, so from the Appleton North side, we have senior Randall Stroh, who's been playing Smash Bros for about three years. Started maining Incineroar after trying to reach one GSP, but realized he was having way too much fun with the character itself. East Seymour, so East sophomore Simon, has been playing Smash Bros for 11 years and two years competitively. His main is Lucina, but he's secondary is Joker. Incineroar getting the clutch recovery. So the percentage you'll see there on the bottom, their damage percent. The higher that goes, the easier it is for them to fly off the screen. Simon getting a shield break and ending up killing. Sinor grab there, going in for a KO. Even footing, two stocks. Sinora there got caught in a shield break, kind of dazed there. Off for a KO, it's 2-1 now with the stocks. Second shield break of the game. Lucina is a fairly fast character, making it easy for her to get around in Sinora. And Cinnaroar's sheer strength is making it hard. As shown, and Cinnaroar getting another kill. No. Oh, an SD for the game. Unfortunate event. <laughs> Lucina coming out on That's top. That's East taking the win. End of the first round goes to East. Still got two more to go. Simon going for the Joker pick. Switch up in characters. Instead of Lucina, it's now Joker versus Incineroar. Joker being a relatively versatile character to play will most likely make it difficult for Incineroar, but so far proving otherwise Incineroar having the upper hand. Joker keeping Incineroar at a distance here, watching out for his melee attack. Joker getting the combo grabs into finally getting Arsene. Good recovery by the Incineroar. Oh, and a KO, and KO from the Joker. on Incineroar. 3 2 now for the score. Famous side B right there. Joker recovering. Full block from Incineroar. Joker at 132, refusing to die, gaining Arsene and power. Oh, but there's the KO. 2-2 two, two now for the score. Losing Arsene. Arsene is basically Joker's trump card, getting a whole bunch of stat buffs and yep. a whole bunch of extra abilities. Mm. 
Unfortunately, Incineroar falling off. Unable One of to recover. main weaknesses is bad recovery, as we can see here by the many SDs. That was quite harsh. You have to be nicer. You have to be an unbiased narrator. Joker getting our send once again. Famous side B. Joker really trying to keep Incinera at a distance to see how well it goes for him. Joker slowly piling on the damage. Combos we're seeing here. But the power of Incineroar prevails. 1-1. One, one. Can Incineroar continue this up? Gaining more and more damage and hopefully avoiding Joker. Incineroar recovering. Arsene coming back. Oh, and there's the KO. East winning the first set. All right, we're on to the next match here. Kyle Thor, Appleton North, senior. Played for a couple of years. He plays Mario, Ice Climbers, Pyramithra. He doesn't really have a reason for it. He just likes the characters. Oh, yeah. East sophomore Caitlin Corsad has been playing Smash Bros. competitively for almost two years. This will also be her second year on varsity. She mains Diddy Kong and occasionally plays Mario. Alongside playing video games, she really likes drawing. Unfortunately, there is always going to be this little pause in between as people get their controls set up as to not accidentally do anything. So during this time, please enjoy yourself to the concessions. Controls are now set up. Now the stages are being picked. We didn't necessarily talk to Simon and Randall, but there are stages that the two up front have to talk about and obviously pick and ban. The reason why you would pick a couple different stages or not want to pick a couple different stages really depends on how you play your character. Each stage has different platforms and different positions, have a couple different things different with them, and that can really make or break a match. Indeed. Going with Pokemon Stadium 2. Looks like we've got Ice Climbers versus Diddy Kong here. Now, interesting thing about Ice Climbers, it's two characters, not one. You always have to make sure you know which one you have to attack. 
Diddy Kong is also an interesting character, considering he has a banana he can throw at people that can stun them and then give you time to combo. Ice Climber's getting a nice combo on the Diddy Kong. Ice Climbers can also hit someone twice in a row, so you have to be careful of their combos to make sure you don't get caught. Something particularly interesting about Diddy is that he is also relatively quick. Easy to do combos with. You can really see Diddy Kong using his mobility here, but ah, Ice Climbers gets the KO. 2-3. Diddy Kong trying to figure out which ice climber to attack. Yeah, that's the word, attack. Thank you, fellow commentator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the little pause after that move there gave ice climbers time to combo. Diddy Kong unfortunately not able to get back on the stage after getting frozen by the ice climbers. One, three now. That's something that I think the Ice Climbers have a fairly decent advantage on. They can freeze. Definitely. Ice Climbers Ice. The Ice Climbers Ice can cause them to freeze another character, making them really open to attacks. Diddy Kong's recovery, as you can see, does damage because the rocket, or what is it, a jetpack? It's yeah, a jetpack. It's a jetpack. It's a jetpack. <laughs> jetpack able to do damage to whoever is on stage if it hits. As you can also tell with that explosion. Diddy Kong getting the first kill on Ice Climbers. 2-1. Two, 1-2. One. One, two. One, two. Ice Climber's really going for the bait and punish here. Diddy Kong KO'd. On match goes to North. <laughs> now we're getting into match two as Caitlin runs off for a quick moment. We're not talking. You can't hear us? Now I can. This is also fun, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Ice Climbers and Diddy Kong once again. Match two underway. <laughs> Ice Climbers starting off strong. Diddy Kong getting a lot more momentum. Diddy Kong able to take on the two ice climbers. Yes, ice climbers are children. 
both of them are technically children. Oh, one ice climber down. It'll be a lot easier for Diddy to control the attacks only going for one ice climber. Ice climbers also don't get that double attack in. Diddy might have an easier time here. With that kill, the other ice climber does in fact come back. It's 3-2 now. Never mind, 2-2. Two, two. Diddy KO'd off the top. Diddy Kong going for the player ice climber, getting in some good combos. Oh, oh almost a spike there. But ice climbers managed to come back. Diddy Kong getting decent damage. Ooh, barely a recovery there by Diddy, but we're still going. If you notice, the Diddy Kong was attempting to get the ice climbers in a good position to spike once again. Diddy Kong zoning, making sure to get the two away from each other. There's the KO, 2-1. You can see Diddy Kong using that banana. Oh, high percentage here. Diddy Kong needs to be careful or Diddy Kong will die. Getting the twins separated is Diddy Kong's main objective. Diddy Kong barely holding on to life. Well, using the jetpack once again to get some damage out on the ice climbers, but still shot off the top. There goes the monkey. The monkey unfortunately falls flat on its face. <laughs> I could make so many banana jokes if I wanted to. Ice climbers at a high percentage here. And there it is, there's the game. East one, north one. This is now going into a third match, which will determine who the points go to. Let's see what stage they go for this time. Personally, in this situation, I would probably pick town and city. Town and city? Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm not I'm not much of a big fan of town and city, personally. Me neither. But I think it'd be a decent counterpick. Even though it's technically not a counterpick stage. Small battlefield they end up picking. Switching it up with Mario for North. Still staying with Diddy for East. If you think about it, this is kind of a fight of the classics, but technically not, because it's not Donkey Kong versus Mario. Mario's a pretty good overall character here. Got some nice neutrals. Very good juggling abilities as well.
Mario's grab there, as you can see, can really throw off stage. Parry of the Diddy Kong. Good Mario move. Diddy Kong really showing off his movement there, getting away from Mario. This is honestly a very even game. Both of them not really being able to do much to each other. Both at well over 100%. This is gonna be a close one. <gasps> Diddy Kong getting out of Diddy oh, Kong getting the first the stock. Very close match. See that banana in action once again, used to stun the other person. Mario's having a hard time fighting against this little monkey. Diddy Kong showing off his combos here. Let's see if Mario can get back on stage. Oh, there it is, 2-2. Two, two. Mario at 100% though. Don't know how much longer the 2-2 two, two is gonna stay. Mario getting more throws, more combos. Oh, but there goes the monkey. Mario's cape can reflect and turn the person around. So that's unfortunately what happened to Diddy Kong. We're now at one, two. Diddy Kong. Oh! Diddy one, Kong one killing with the, the jetpack. Pack. Both characters showing off their aerials here. Diddy Kong really getting in the combos. Mario takes it back though for the win. And that game goes to North. And that includes the set. Set two going to North. It is currently tied at three points. I think the game after they think the character is like having fun and they don't care. I think the game after they think it's that they are just the characters. Thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what? Stop. Dominic having a moment of confusion. <laughs> You're welcome, Dom. <laughs> Dominic, this is not this kind of audience. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so for Appleton North, we have Ben Robertson. Ben? Yes, Ben Gaming. They are, he is playing King DDD right now because he finds his moveset fun. He sometimes plays Lucina and he's been playing on and off since Ultimate came out. East Junior Dom has been playing, Dominic has been playing Smash since he was seven. This is his second year on the varsity team and he's one of our JV captains. Dom plays Rob and Palutena. He's our team stream coordinator and hosts a local tournament weekly in Appleton called Phantasm. So as you can see, North is King DDD, the big DDD. I don't know what DDD actually is. It's been a very long time. Oh, he's a penguin? I'm sorry. East is very crazy about the fact that I did not know that DDD was a penguin. I'm sorry. On East, we have Rob, the little robot. He's your robotic operating buddy. And he utilizes items and ranged attacks mostly to keep DDD away. Both characters pack quite a punch. It is currently 2-2. Two, two. Both characters are fairly heavy and slow, but they do hit really hard. So we're going to see some very high percentages. Like, normally you would not see 185, but of course... Oh, already down to 2-1. Commentator's Curse, King DDD Falls. Rob is also able to reflect some attacks with that spinning arm. But DDD's hammer hits hard. Rob still holding on at 165%. Commentator's curse once again. I should just stop talking. <laughs> We're at 1-1 one, one now. DDD utilizing all abilities along with Rob. Rob getting in a dodge there off the DDD spike ball. Rob attempting to. Oh! oh. And uh, Rob. Here's Rob's edge guard game. That's the phrase I've been thinking of. The two ending up picking PS2. 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 Okay. Yep. Cool. Pokemon PS2. Stadium. Pokemon Stadium 2. Sticking with Rob and DDD. As per mentioned, Rob for East, DDD for North. 
Rob opening in with a small little combo. Not letting DDD lay a finger. Oh, DDD almost missing ledge there, but getting back on at the last second. DDD finally hitting the Rob. Rob's ledge guarding ability is insane. see Rob going out here with his ranged attacks, getting away from DDD and his hard-hitting hammer. Rob getting the kill. Is now 3-2. DDD learning to edge guard. DDD getting the kill. 2-2. Two, two. Normally in a situation like this, we would say that 88 is a pretty high percentage, but for DDD, not necessarily. As mentioned prior, both are heavy characters. Able to take a lot of hits and deal a lot of damage. Not easy to knock off the stage. Also not really easy to kill, as stated. DD really using that spike ball to get Rob into a nice place for him to hit. As I stated, 80 is not oh. commentator's curse. 2-1, DDD goes down. DDD does have that special little ability where he can inhale his opponent and shoot them out as a cute little star. Kirby also has this ability, but instead of s spitting them back out, Kirby swallows it and gains their ability. DDD oh. getting the kill. It's 1-1 one, one again, pretty close matchup. DDD zoning, oh, ledge guarding. Oh, on Rob off stage. Rob rolling into. Oh, DDD back on stage with a slam. Rob's at a fairly high percentage here. We'll see how this goes. Rob's main priority at the moment is to zone and get away from DDD. One twenty-eight to one seventy-one, oh, killing with his own spike ball. Rob gets the win. As you can see there, Rob used his spinning arm attack to reflect DDD's spike ball back at him. And there goes. Since this is the third set, that is four points for East, going seven for East, three for North. The 
the next two up, slowly figuring out what stage they are going to play. Deciding to go with Smashville for the stage. All right, here we have playing for East, senior Brandon Kristad. He's been playing Smash for 10 years, and this will be his fourth year on varsity. Brandon plays Luigi, Pokemon trainer, and Roy. He enjoys playing basketball and watching football in his spare time. And for the north side, playing Joker at the moment, William is a senior. He's been playing Smash Bros around the four-ish year mark. And he began playing Smash Bros genuinely in middle school by playing Super Smash Flash. He also plays Pyra Mithra, Greninja, Captain Falcon, and Zero Suit Samus. As you can see, he is playing Joker. Yep, we have Luigi for East and Joker for North. Luigi's great at combos, keeping his opponent on edge. Joker has two move sets, one with Arsene, one without oh, Arsene. Oh, Luigi kills Joker there. Luigi Three getting two. the kill. During this stage, when Joker does not have Arsene, his main focus is to zone. Oh! Joker gets KO'd again by Luigi. 3-1. A B on Luigi is quite a difficult feat. But Luigi can't quite make it back onto stage. Unfortunately, there was no misfire. During the stage when Joker does not have Arsene, his main focus is to zone, get away, and do as much damage as possible to get Arsene with the bottom little rebellion's gauge by the percentage. Once that's completely filled, then you get Arsene. What do I do? Screen having a bit, of, a bit of trouble here. Oh, we unfortunately, Joker stage. falling off the stage, attempting to Tetracharm, which is a reflection move. And that point goes to East. As a Sonic fan, your narrator is hurt that you didn't pick Fist Bump. Oh, switch up on North side, going for Pyramithra, a notoriously annoying character to play against. Mithra can switch between two characters, obviously Pyra and Mithra. Each have different moves they can use. The moves stay for quite a long time and have range, which does not make it fun to attack. Mithra having a lot more move advantage, Pyra having a lot more damage advantage. Oh, Luigi making it back on stage there. The blonde hair is Mithra. And as I stated before, having a lot more movement advantage. 
Whereas Pithra, this one, the one with the red hair. Pyra. Pyra. Pithra. My bad. Pyra. Having a lot more damage output with the fire abilities. Luigi at quite a high percentage, as well as Pithra there as well. Oh, there we go. First death goes to Luigi. 2 3. Luigi using everything available to get Pithra off of him. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and there's the second KO. Luigi two, getting two, a kill. Even score. Luigi showing off his combos again. The thing that appears on Luigi's back is the poltergeist. Is it 9,000? 5,000. 5, I'm sorry. It's been a very long time since I've played or listened to any information about the game that that's from, Luigi's Mansion. If we're thinking about the poltergeist not 5,000, it's basically like the Ghostbusters. Mostly everyone should know the Ghostbusters. I hope so. <laughs> Piper and Mithra being from Xenoblade. Oh, there's our next KO. 2 1. Mithra goes down. Luigi recovering. Luigi getting the second kill. Luigi this set going to East. East wins that set. We move on to the next one. Currently, the points are uh, 11 to East, 3 to North. I believe so. As the final two are setting up controllers, we hope that our narration has been informational enough to the point where you're not lost. <laughs> thank you, thank you, everybody. We'd also like to thank the library staff for letting us use the space. the coaches who allow us to play.
Due to unfortunate technical circumstances, we are going to very slowly finish, start this match. The camera is not quite working. Apparently, this is a never mind from the tech community, from the tech group. And by the tech group, we mean one person. I don't even know anything about this. They threw me down here for one day. Cool. <laughs> Hope you're having fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, at least you know technology. I have a walkie-talkie, so I'm somewhat important. <laughs> and we have a microphone. <laughs> Two microphones. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right, looks like the stage is Pokemon Stadium 2. Sort of a general all-around great for most characters. Yeah. And so, to introduce the final two, we have Senior Leo has been playing Smash for just over a year. His main is Lucas, because at least it isn't Ness. If PK Fire spam a neutral air out of shield stops working, he might mix it up with Bayonetta or Jigglypuff. East Senior Fletcher has been playing Smash for five years, this being his third as captain for Varsity. Fletcher plays Jigglypuff, Mewtwo, and Diddy Kong. He's going to UW Oshkosh, where he hopes to start an esports league. Oh, and Lucas already down. Three to two. Camera is back officially working. And to continue, the Mewtwo versus Lucas matchup is very interesting. And as l it states in Leo's bio, at least, it is not Ness. I would argue that l Lucas is still just as annoying. For those who don't know, Ness and Lucas are quite annoying to play against. Their versatile moves and attack that can literally stop you in your tracks are extremely annoying. They have a plethora of abilities that they could very easily catch you off guard with. And like the ice climbers we saw earlier, oh, they can freeze. Oh, two, two, Mewtwo goes down. Oh, Lucas gets that hard to manage recovery straight back into Mewtwo's combos. Unfortunately, the screen having jet lag apparently um, is really hindering our players. Mewtwo really using that hard hitting tail ledge guarding and unfortunately Ooh. Mewtwo falls one two. Oh, and there comes the Mewtwo edge guarding for one one even score The two of them attempting to zone each other out. Nothing really crazy is going on at the moment, just a zone game where they're trying to get the other off guard. Mewtwo trying to ledge guard. Oh. Successfully ledge guarding, I should say. Mewtwo's ledge guarding is very difficult to get away from, given how much range it has with its tail and aerials. And, and there that concludes Lucas. game one, going to East. <laughs> Simon, what did you say?
Hopefully the technical difficulties with the screen having jet lag will subside. Yeah, you know, um, Smash Bros. Boys, you don't need to hate the screen. That includes our varsity members of both schools. Green doesn't have any issues this time, and they are able to have a nice, clean fight. Mewtwo starting out, oh, and unfortunately, commentator's curse. I'm so sorry, everybody. On um, small battlefield this time. We are going to genuinely fix this screen issue, so that is, what hap that is what's currently happening. Yeah, so each player is just going to go off the edge because there's no pausing on the legal rule set, and we're going to try and fix the screen. Hopefully fixed it, maybe. Hopefully. I should just not say anything, so I don't break it by talking. Commentator's curse. What? I didn't Sorry. say anything. It was all me. Ha! <laughs> Impressive. We should just ba, start ba, singing ba. the Smash theme. Ba 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 la 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 da. Thank you for listening to our shenanigans, everybody as we switch the technical difficulties. Oh, we're back? Hopefully everything. We shouldn't say anything, never mind. We will not say anything about the technical difficulties. We are just gonna continue on with the Lucas and Mewtwo match. Good luck to the both of you. Currently, East is at 11 points. North is at three points. Mewtwo, which is on East side, won the first match. If Lucas wins this match, then it goes to a third match. And if Mewtwo wins this, then East takes the five points and wins. <laughs> Good recoveries from Lucas. Each player trying to use their moves to control the other. Let's see how it goes. 
Perry oh, perfect from Perry from Lucas, giving him an advantage. Both over a hundred percent now. Mewtwo continuing to ledge guard. Having the upper advantage of having the ground to stand on. Oh, perfect parry into a KO. 3-2. Another perfect parry from Lucas. But the Nair hitbox stays and does damage. Ledge guarding from the two of them. A fight off stage. Axe oh, and Lucas sadly goes ending up and down. Lucas going down. Three one. Mewtwo almost over one thirty. And there goes Mewtwo. Did I say Lucas? Yeah, Mewtwo goes down. Two one. Commentator's curse. Yeah. Lucas trying to zone the Mewtwo as for Mewtwo to not start the ledge guarding game. Lucas edge guarding. Mewtwo reflecting the PK fire back to Lucas. Obviously, Mewtwo is from the very popular series Pokemon as one of a legendary Pokemon. I could not tell you which gen. First one, so the first game. Oh, there goes Lucas. Mewtwo takes the win, getting East the five points for the set. East gets the five points for the set, and I believe wins. Good job to everyone involved. You all put up a great fight. Hey, and just so you know, everybody, you know, um, in two weeks, we start our playoffs. Um, North and East will both, all the teams qualify. All the teams, look at you giving me the microphone. All the teams start off in the brackets, and tournament will be on the 10th of December, and hopefully we'll be there, you know, just cheer each other. Um, but just so you know, it's a great opportunity to come to their colleges recruiting there, and you can ask lots of great questions, um, because there are scholarships for this, and I know that seems crazy, but there is, there's a lot of money. Um, and he's a lot of here, got, she was on our team, I don't know why, but she got a tuition ride to Carthage. So, um, I know that's crazy. And that's where the money's at. So, I'm talking to some colleges and hear what their opportunities are. So, it's fun. Do we have all the players? Oh yeah, everybody, all the players, get up in front, we'll need a picture. Yeah, everyone coming to see this match from East against North. smaller than you think, Caitlin. Photos are a lot smaller than you think, Caitlin. Get in there. That's understandable. Please don't step in the cord. But that, just get a voice. There are people, there are other 
Let's get people out of in the area. I'm trying to take my camera. I gotta get this shot. Okay, too. stop. <laughs> Joey, unfortunately, no. Okay. All right, everyone in pictures. Let's 